Welcome to his SV Pod. Stanford Steve joins us from parts unknown, somewhere in between Atlanta and uh, Athens. <laughs> and uh, I understand that hearing might be. Do I need to yell? <laughs> I, I don't know if I need it that loud or I need quieter or anything, Scott. It, uh, it, 37 days. That was that was the first thing Georgia fans said to me checking in the hotel uh, Thursday morning, afternoon, right around there. 37 days since Georgia had a home game, and they were they were ready. Uh, they knew what their boys were up against after last week's debacle in, in Oxford and knowing what they looked like. And, you know, all the game day crew, what we know of Georgia is what we saw when we were there for them at Texas. And to hear the buildup, feel the buildup, and then to go in there and – I, I can't tell you how loud it was. Uh, it, it, they do this new thing now, and I know everybody does the lighting, but they do this new thing now with the music. Like, it goes like the beginning of Enter Sandman to, like, DMX. They do, like, all these mashups, and it's between every single play. So you get, like, three songs as fast as Tennessee goes, and, and Kirby said he averaged it out. There's, like, 10 seconds in between plays. That's that's how fast it's 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 utter chaos, and you saw Tennessee get those drives early on, and they never let up. Crowd never let up. Um, I've called them spoiled uh, because of what they've had to celebrate the last couple of years. But good lord, did they bring it tonight? It was it was incredible, man. Uh, it's it's a it it shows you why they should be in the top of the tier as far as. The experience, the team, the program, the tradition, everything, they got it. Athens Athens brought it tonight, man. Heavyweight fight. Heavyweight fight. And they took some punches. Yeah. They took some punches. Early. They're down, they're down double digits. They're down double digits. And then there are a couple moments. I mean, there's completion, they like a ball f- balls out balls out, and Georgia pounces on it there. That was after they had scored. Tennessee fans have got their Complain about some calls. Like, what about this? What about a face mask? What about twelve men? I mean, there's there's a lot. There's a lot. There's always a lot cooked into things. You didn't score in the second. What, what half. struck me. There's that, and here's the bigger thing to me. Tennessee's front is nasty. It's the strength of that team in many respects. Georgia's O line has been its weakness. They don't have many weaknesses. That's been an issue for them. That front didn't give Beck a lot of trouble, and nope. if Beck's clean, he looks like a pro. Yeah, he looked he looked awesome. It was uh, just watching the tape and knowing what Georgia had to shore up, Scott, and knowing the lack of separation they created. I mean, first play of the game, you saw that Georgia was going to – there's other words to say it, but they were going to show you what they got tonight. And Arian Smith drops it. I'm standing right there on the Tennessee sideline. I'm like, man, that's like a 40-yard gain to start the game. Carson Beck, confidence, crowd noise, and no, Arian can't hold on to it. But what I thought going into the game was the lack of separation receivers could create. If they could hold up up front, the tight ends could do some things in the middle. And I'm watching Carson Beck in pregame, and he's throwing his pregame routine, and I'm watching the middle of the field throws. And it is, and I know it's on air, but my man was dialed in and the, a ball did not hit the ground. I would say it's like 16 out of 16. And I'm just standing there. I'm like, man, uh, the, the, he's, he's, he's going to play well tonight. And then you talk to, um, you know, people around the programs, meetings, walkthroughs, whatever was around there, you know, the stuff that he had to go through, um, you know, with, with, with the losses early on, uh, there was some, you know, some stuff that happened and it was, it was the way he fought through it and stayed positive. Uh, I think is a testament to him and the coaching staff to stay believing in him. Uh, you know, I, 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 I didn't see it, but I guess one of the last questions to Kirby at the end of the Ole Miss press conference was the idea of a quarterback. And then he re you know, backed him up again. Uh, like if there was going to be a change or anything, he's like, 
Carson Beck's our guy, you know, uh, you know, they got some guys that are, that are here with some with a lot of stars and you know, that's, that's the new thing. You know, somebody fails and they want to go to the next thing. Well, guess what? People thought Georgia was going to fail and they stood up, they took punches and man, it, it, I, I don't know what else to say about them. Like they respond as to opposed to teams that with getting losses and 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 then getting punches taken those teams falter not Kirby Smart's team not not because of him because of him and uh it was I, I, I like I said I'm out of words to describe them it's 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 incredible to see in person they're built for it is what I think <laughs> they're just built for it they're built to compete and look in the SEC and other conferences, you guys can eye roll, and I get it. But look, in the Big Ten, you're just not dealing with this, okay? No. You're not. You got four good teams. Now, Wisconsin battle tonight, we'll get to that in a minute. But you're just like a and you've managed to largely duck the heavyweights. You didn't have to play Bama or Georgia or... I forget who else, but you're going to play Texas. I know you're, I know you're excited about that. Ole Miss um, or Tennessee. Tennessee, yeah. So, like, you, you, you've you managed to avoid that. And and it's a, it's a bit like playing cards, you know. Do you, do you get that – you get easy cards, you get hard cards. And for years, Georgia's schedule – like, we talked about this a lot these, in the last month. You know, the bill came due for all those years. They didn't have to play anybody. So Georgia's played a tough schedule. I think they're built for it. I think, I think just got a bunch of competitive people. I think it starts with Kirby Smart. You're down there in the middle of it. You're, you see it. You feel it. And um, you got you had 30 minutes in the second half that you blank a Tennessee. That Tennessee offense isn't great. I get it. But, you know, a couple of drives, a late drive, significant to some. Mm. Uh, as they end up winning by 14, and now it creates this gigantic log jam with two lost teams. And I don't know how it gets sorted out. I really don't. I haven't got a clue in the world what the committee's going to do on ten on Tuesday. And guess what? Neither do they. Mm -hmm. They're going to get in there and start batting around and going, well, what do we do with Georgia? Because they lost to them, but then they beat them, and then they beat them. But then well, what about them? And I got a question. And I, I don't – number one was in a fight, so I – we're going to get to that, but since we're talking SEC, Steve, I have a I have an important question. What does Texas do that's super impressive? Um, mm -hmm. lead the country in least amount of explosive plays given up. Okay. All right. They're the they're good games. In September, looked like they'd be Michigan. No, Oklahoma. No, Florida. They're on their third string quarterback. They played Georgia at home, got their ass kicked. They were in the game. It was a two score game. They lost at home by more than fourteen points. So I, 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 they. Two things can be true at once, right? They got. I'll say it more gently. They got beat by 15 points. That's a fact, correct? Yeah. I'm not trying to take them out of the ranking. I just watched them play today. I took Arkansas plus a dozen. I watched them play. It's 20 to 10. Last time that team played that they beat today, 20 to 10, they gave up 63 points. Mm -hmm. Now, Mississippi's built a little different. I get whatever. I don't know, man. I just, I just think they're all right. I think that that's college football maybe this year. I don't, maybe I don't think that there's a dominant team. Nobody's been dominant. You saw Georgia tonight, and they're awful impressive. They've lost a couple times. Mm -hmm. You know, granted, it was on the road <laughs> against teams that are ranked high. But I mean, this Texas team, I guess when they play to their ceiling, that all right. I just they haven't beat anybody. That's all. And so I'm just... So where are you putting them? Get a chance in the, where do you put them? You just want them lower? Where they are. I'm not saying you drop them. I'm just saying they're ranked where they're ranked, largely because they haven't been tested. 
And so that's the benefit of them, I think, is that they're, they're, they get to be where they are because of who they have and haven't played. And so I don't think it's unreasonable just to kind of shrug and go, I don't know, they're going to get their chance to show it. I just think when you go to, when you, okay, you hold, hold Arkansas out of 10, you only scored 20 on a team that's given up a ton. Then you could say, hey, that team beat Tennessee. They did. I don't know. I just felt like I caught Texas on a day where they were just. Everybody did. Everybody did. Everybody did. It was it was the talk all over town. What is Texas? What are they? I'm like they have one loss. You know that they, they're yeah. in they're in the big bad SEC and they're playing the schedule yeah. that was given to them. I, I I'm not gonna, I'm not getting mad at them. Uh, you know it's it's a it's a brutal well, circumstance I'm for not them mad. to go into. Not mad. I don't care. I'm not mad. I'm not I'm not put off by them. I just look, they're in the same boat as, as uh, you know, some other teams that just their schedule hasn't asked as much of them. So, you know, they're they playoff are. worthy to me. I, I, I don't I don't doubt them. At say all. no more. Say no more. And say, I just asked, what do they do that's super impressive? Play defense is a great answer. And look, yours when the grease is hot, man, and they've they've had some moments certainly where they can they can run it up on people. I don't, I'm not suggesting they're not capable of whooping the crap out of somebody. I just, I guess I just didn't see You don't it think today, they can win a which, national but, championship? I didn't say that. I just said I don't think anybody's super impressive. And Who is? The, Who is? No one. All that's right. the point. Okay. And we, all right. I just, and we just, I, I and we just, we just, breaking news. To Texas, that's all. Breaking news, we just lost another unbeaten. Oh, Can- oh, Kansas baby. on the field. <laughs> Was that your super dog? No, not not enough points for a super dog. But, man, we're people coming at your boy today, and we'll get to that. But I'm totally fine with it. Well, I gave out KU. So did I. Points, so. well. Um. We'll save that till the end because this is the second week in a row we've been sort of <laughs> on on, B- oh, on BYU watch. Oh, man. Let's start with number one. Speaking of weeks where people weren't wildly impressive, I expected Wisconsin at some point in that stadium to stand up. They got trucked by Bama. <laughs> they got beat by this a decent now, number man. by we're, we're in it. <laughs> Penn State. And... Tonight, they stand up and really battle against Oregon. Now, I don't know how much you saw. I realized where you were. Mm-hmm. I thought Wisconsin, they had a touchdown that got taken away mm-hmm. for an illegal downfield. I thought it was borderline. It's a 13-13 game in the fourth. Wisconsin's not going to, they're not going to get a ton of yards, and they didn't. They got a first down in a 13-all game, and there was a chop block call. I thought that was a bad call. Then Oregon gets a field goal out of out of a drive, and then they get a turnover on downs, and they get cute and try to run a fake field goal instead of going up by six. They get stopped, and then they get a pick, and they win. And at the end of it, much like Texas winning by 10, Oregon stays clean, and Camp Randall, even though this isn't a vintage Badger team, that's a good win. And... Any win is a good win right now because it's <laughs> ask BYU. It's better than losing. But Oregon was not, wow, look at the Ducks tonight. But I suppose it doesn't matter? Question mark? Uh, I think there's a lot here because they were, everybody loves landing. Everybody loves the video about, them going to Michigan, doing a thumbs down, or you not entertain, unbelievably produced piece. Like, I watched, what was it, 15 minutes? Watched the whole thing. Incredible. But I'm sitting to myself all week, and I'm just like, all right, this is eight straight Big Ten games they've played. And are they that good? Are And, and you touched on it before. I don't know who's elite this year. It seems like everybody has these weeks. And I'm just thinking to myself, I just wanted to see Oregon have to sweat today. 
I wanted to see them have to sweat. They did see them how they responded, and they did. Uh, you know, Gabriel made made a couple of plays when they really needed it. Uh, a big one with his legs. Four, uh, go ahead. A, a fourth and nine early in the fourth quarter, and, and it was really close to being a defensive stop for the Badgers. But but Gabriel zipped it in there, and it was a good it was a good squeeze there. Uh, I was I believe it was a tight end. Um, forgive me for not having Ferguson. the uh, the ID on the player, but go. I don't I don't remember. Okay. I just. I know it was, it was, it was, look, it was early fourth, fourth and nine. They got the play they had to have. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, so that, that's what I wanted to see. Cause you haven't seen it. And like I said, eight straight weeks with these, you know, we talk about the schedules and are we going to be able to compare them and the wins and the losses, but eight straight in your conference uh, is a lot. And, moving to this conference where everybody said the physicality was going to catch up with you. Uh, I thought it was a, a testament to the league. Uh, I know nobody likes moral victories, but Wisconsin, this is something you could build on. We talk about how much we love fickle. This was a fickle game and um, I, they don't want to hear it. I, I get Wisconsin doesn't want to hear it, but from Oregon's standpoint, no. uh, it was, I I'm with you. I thought Penn State going there, the way they won, was a good win. We think more of the building mm -hmm. than a lot of people that haven't been there, I do believe. And Oregon went there Maybe. and got it done. They did, and they it, it took a lot. And I, I do give them, again, <laughs> they won. The end. I just, I, I, Tennessee's bitching about some calls today. I don't blame them. Wisconsin, I agree with some call. Like I would be like, "Whoa, aren't we supposed to get a good home whistle?" It's Madison. They always get the good Terps whistle. Did, Terps, not nah, call whistle. Call like, call oh, whistle is a different Cole. whistle. It's got to be a call. Call whistle. <laughs> Big Ten Cameron. They did not get the call whistle tonight in Camp Randall. Mm. I don't know what that was all about. Let's stay in that zip code of of top ranked teams and a Big Ten team. Ohio State's in a 7-7 game with about five minutes to go in Wrigley, mm -hmm. which was taken over by Ohio State fans. Nine. Remember Ohio State fans, when you're out at Oregon, yeah. when you're out at yeah. Oregon, they're like, hey, it's going to be 60-40, and you're like, fellas, <laughs> gals, whoever it was. No, it isn't, mm. and it wasn't. They absolutely take over Wrigley. It's all scarlet and gray. But it's a 7-7 game, and it was – I took Northwestern in, in winners, and it was the exact – script I pictured was Northwestern will battle you on defense and I could see like a ball control get first downs try to bleed clock shorten the game all you need is one score getting 28 and a half <laughs> and you're in decent shape well they got it they're mm. up seven nothing now it's seven seven they're punting with five yeah. to go in the half and it's a catastrophe. <laughs> and it, it is, I thought it was a safety. It's a worst case scenario. The ball gets blocked, it goes out at the one, touchdown Ohio State, get a stop, get it back, scores 21 7. You were like, here we bleep and go. Mm -hmm. um, they win. They did exactly what they needed to do. They won. They weren't. Wildly impressive, but you're not going to need to be against a Northwestern team that's so limited on offense. And with Indiana coming in next week for a noon game, I know how excited you guys are about that. Big Ten folks, your noon kicks. Game day will be there. Their show will be there. Hooray. Uh, check the box. Get the dub. Have fun in Chicago and move on. All I can think about is next week, Scott. Because this game, no matter who you talk to, Big Ten, SEC, Big 12, Pac oh, wait, there's no more Pac-12. Uh, this Indiana-Ohio State game is what everybody has been asking for since people realized Indiana was undefeated and had a chance to make the playoff. I think it's bigger than any Ohio State-Penn State game or Michigan-Penn State game in recent memory uh it, it it's that anticipate because of the outlier of indiana and their schedule and what the big 10 did to them not 
being able to put them in certain time slots, but they're here. They're going to show up in Columbus and everyone I talk to haven't met one person that gives Indiana a chance. And everybody thinks Indiana, uh, Ohio state's going to blow them out. And I'm not done on the tape, but I'd be careful there. Early lean from Stanford, Steve. I, I said earlier that I don't know who's elite this year. I think Ohio State might have a gear that if they find it next Saturday, mm -hmm. they'll demonstrate that. I hear you saying be careful. I know how much regard you have for that Indiana offensive line. Mm -hmm. You and I are both big believers in Rourke. Mm -hmm. I think he's exactly what – he reflects the idea of Signetti – and the way that team plays, value the ball, get leads, expand leads, play the fight song, go to one of the 86 bars in Bloomington. <laughs> Which was the one you liked the best? <laughs> All of them. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm, I'm, look, we're, we're in the same boat just in terms of it's hard not to already be thinking about that game because yeah. it, it means so much. And – I said I was going to get preemptively mad for Indiana, that they were going to get screwed because they're not Penn State. And Penn State has a loss, and they're ranked ahead of a team that doesn't have a loss. So they've already the committee's already told you what they think. Um, so Indiana, I guess, has to win. Wouldn't be, wouldn't be enough to go lose by seven. Penn State already did that, and they're ranked ahead of them. So I guess all Indiana can do is win. And I bet that Signetti would say, and that's fine with us. <laughs> that guy got on the mic when he got hired, went into Assembly Hall and said, Purdue sucks. <laughs> Michigan sucks. Ohio State sucks. <laughs> like, somebody get the mic away from mm. this, your drunk uncle at Thanksgiving. Like, who let this man speak? And it, I thought he was great when he came on. Sports Center and said, "Look, I'll admit to you, you're, it's a little bit performative. You're trying to you're trying to create confidence, and but guess what? If it was a gambit, it paid off. Uh, but now, now right, that that bill comes due because you got to go there. But you haven't lost a game, so it's it's impossible not to yeah. not to look ahead to that game. Well, I'm sure we'll talk about that when we talk Wednesday after we get a look at the rankings and." will really be amped up. You'll have seen more tape. I mentioned Penn State. Uh, I don't know what. I just want to acknowledge Tyler Warren. They did the thing in this Purdue game that they should have done at the one against Ohio State, mm. which is direct snap to 44. Mm. I'd have done it four times. You didn't do it once. That was a mistake. <laughs> he had another big day. But I'm just going to say, with all due respect, Mackey was on fire. They beat Alabama. Boiler up, bang the big ass drum. Your football team has now lost by 35 or more five times. Five. You're horrible. My God. Why are you laughing? What are you laughing at? Because <laughs> they're not on Maryland's schedule this year. It's going to be on that one. Well, yeah. Like, can we play them twice? <laughs> Um, I think that's forbidden by rule. They've lost five times by 35 or more, including 66 to seven against Notre Dame in a game where I had them. What's the points? We weren't getting 59 for the push. If holy crap, if, Ross aid. Sorry. The, the SVP winners cross off list grows grows every week every year and those teams yeah. you know who those teams are there's only one this year that i've gotten for do and they're them because That's there were a couple of times know. where there were a couple of times where they were the spot where if I'm looking at it, that's the direction I would go. And I'm like, no <laughs> fucking way. Not my money. Not the people's money out there that are looking for guidance from your boy. Nope. I'm not saying that 
because the world had Penn State, and guess what? They cashed mm -hmm. because Purdue can't do it this year. So I don't know what there is to say about Penn State. They won by a million. They're fine. What's the... I guess we'll know after the Ohio State Indiana game. We'll have a better idea of what the what the head to head situation. It'll is be all situated by head to head. Okay, unless Indiana wins. So it'll be Oregon. It'll be Oregon, and then the winner of Ohio State Indiana. Mm -hmm. Right, because if Indiana beats Ohio State, then they'll yep. be unbeaten, and they'll right. And if Ohio State beats them, then Ohio State will have beaten Penn State. Okay, and Penn State only there played Washington in a whiteout. Big noon. Got it. That was a whole other thing. They can't story. do it. Um, I got Notre Dame down here. Mm -hmm. I want to mention them. Their defense is defense is impressive. Although Virginia got an insane backdoor bad beat. So. Thank you, Lord. The first Thank you. Oh, you had them? Yeah. <laughs> what were your picks today? Virginia. Louisville. That get there? They lost on the field to Stanford. Oh, that's right. Oh my how did I not leave how did I not leave with In that? Kansas. It's my mistake. Okay. Two two and one. Thank um you. get back to Stanford, by the way. I, I oh, apologize I can't for not wait getting, to talk getting... about it because I've heard from people okay. I didn't know watch college football anymore. Well, the Notre Dame defense is impressive. Mm -hmm. It was like twenty eight nothing at the half against the Virginia team that's you know it's capable but they didn't have a chance mm -hmm. uh against that notre dame defense um and i was bored steve and so i did one of these transitive things oh, you i ready? thought you were gonna say you started live betting <laughs> no i don't i'm not that i'm not going down that road you find me down at the high alive playing <laughs> keno be thankful you're on that bootleg site smoking camels uh <laughs> you ready for this notre dame somehow lost to northern illinois mm -hmm. we know this northern illinois lost to ball state mm -hmm. ball state lost to central michigan fire up chips central michigan lost to ohio ohio lost to miami of ohio miami of ohio is the only team in the country that trailed Kent State at any point in the game. I don't know what that means other than that somehow Notre Dame lost to the team that 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 lost to the team. That's the only team that trailed. Yulatowski! And that doesn't make any sense to me. The most Stanford beating Louisville, that's, whoa, I don't know how that happened. But nothing, nothing will make less sense the Northern Illinois going to South Bend and telling Touchdown Jesus, what's up? <laughs> I can't believe I can't believe that happened. But they're they're a playoff team, right? Yeah. Um Okay. It's it's really impressive what Marcus Freeman has done as far as scheme personnel recruiting. When I look at them, love the personnel coming in to the season that's why I thought they would be all right as as Riley Leonard figured things out and they lose my favorite defensive player in, in, in Morrison the corner hip surgery their top NFL player and right before the Navy game where you're like I don't know how or I think it may be Georgia Tech where you're like I want to see how this defense adapts he recruits. He's got true freshmen. He's got he's got a second year guy out in the secondary. Secondary is phenomenal, uh, and he's got some studs up front. So they were able to rely on that defense. But the the thing I brought up today on game day, Scott, was everyone loves picking apart Notre Dame's schedule before they play a game, right? Or, you know, SC. Who's the ACC teams they play? Who would have thought their games? against army and navy were going to be more important than their games against florida state and usc it's it's wow that, that that just like to your point about nobody being elite that sums it up right there their game they're playing ranked 
they played a ranked Navy team. They're going to play a ranked Army team in an unranked Florida State, unranked USC. Think about that. Army is going to play in the in that conference championship game because of what happened today. And they're going to play right? against Tulane. Who beat the crap out of Navy. Shout to Coach Munkin. Lay down. Bleed a while. And I'm like, Was Navy up, in winners? Fight. Fight some more. Fight some more. No. Good. Navy was not in winners. Good. San Jose State was. That was the most disgusting loss of ever. Ever. I I can't. It. You've got to be kidding me. Ugh. You've got to be kidding me. And look, I dig Boise. I like Genty. First one of these we did. The guy ran for like 9,000 yards. And then they battled Oregon. We're like, okay. But. You are not the right side today, and that didn't need to happen. You could have won by less, and everyone's happy, but you didn't. And that's sickening. <laughs> Truly sickening. Boys, these they were, uniforms were on point, though. Orange helmets, orange pants, those were nice. No one cares. It was disgusting and unjust. We'll see it Monday night. Might be the entire thing. <laughs> no, actually, we need to show some... There's some there's some hoops oh, calamities that just we need to remember we remind people hey you get all excited oh we got hoops yeah cool and nightly chances to have your uh, entire bankroll go up and smoke um, where am I going off of this <laughs> I've got so much go after I, Notre I don't wanna, Dame I don't go wanna, ahead well, you mentioned the ACC. I just want to do the bookkeeping on the ACC. Mm -hmm. SMU wins a, a game against BC that was a little closer than folks thought it might be. But they go to the title if they beat Virginia. They got two games left. All they got to do is beat Virginia, and that means they will go for sure in their first every year in the ACC. Miami will go if they sweep their last two because they'll win the head-to-head -head with Clemson. Careful. They didn't play them, but, they, but the, uh, at that trip to Syracuse mm -hmm. now. You never know which McCord you're going to get. <laughs> but they went out to Bear Territory Oof. and got a dub on the field. That's – that's, and look, Miami spent the last two months messing around with people and pulling rabbits out of hats, and then Georgia Tech, they ran out of rabbits. I'm just telling you that this is the bookkeeping. Miami goes if they win their last two because they won the head-to-head -head with Clemson because they beat Louisville and – Clemson did not. Speaking of Louisville, Steve, the floor is yours. Okay, so doing my work, uh, I wanted some certain things from the research department, and they gave it to me because I was starting to wonder about Stanford against ranked teams. And the fact is okay. there isn't one team worse than, against the spread, against ranked teams in the last five years than Stanford University. So, I like what I saw from Jeff Brom. I like what I saw from Tyler Shuck. There's no home field advantage in Palo Alto. Let's fire up some asses out in Palo Alto, and let's give out Louisville. And you know what I heard? How many people did I hear from until – a 52-yard field goal went in because of, what, 30 yards and penalties? Zero. 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 The show was on at 6 a.m. out there. 6 a.m. And I watch every week. And it's been bad. Bad, bad, bad. So if that's what I got to do to fire up some asses out in Palo Alto, gimme Cal on the board next week in the big game against Stanford. There you go. You want motivation? I'm here for motivation. I don't care the Steve. hits that I'm going to take. I don't care. If that's going to mean you're going to win games on the field, I'll take them all. All of them. I'll take them all. Doesn't matter to me. Steve, don't get crazy and reckless. Don't You can't. You just, you just took Cal in the big game? Yeah. It'll be on the board Saturday, guaranteed. Well, if you're telling me you took Louisville 
on College Game Day, which is enjoying its highest ratings in the history of the show, as Boy, my understanding. Sh- Did you see anything today? Steve, we, we were at the flag football field for approximately 11 hours. Championships? Okay. No, not yet, but we've got some dubs. All got right, we're dubs. making our way there. So, no. 11 hours? Uh, my, <laughs> it only felt that way. It was a <laughs> give or take. My point is, College Game Day is a highly rated program. It's doing great. The fact that you picked against your team and didn't hear from anybody Mm -hmm. until Louisville gets 30 yards of penalties, which sets up a 52-yard field goal, which beats your team, and then maybe you heard from people. Yeah. It's fine. That's not. I'll take it. What you're you're saying is you're willing to be heckled if it's going to fire up some asses on the farm. You're damn right. Love it. Love it. Get it done. Well, it worked. It worked. Exactly. Take How? pride in take pride in the win. They were up 14, Louisville, in the fourth quarter. Lost. Well, regulation. It's a long flight. It's Oof, a long flight home after an L. Bad. Bad flight. That's a tough. That's a tough one. The, all right. Let's stay on the tough ones today. The L- LSU, that's over. I I wanted so much to put uh, Florida in winners, but I, w- yeah. I wasn't positive Me about too. the quarterback situation. Me too. And until I knew, like, once I hear Lagway's going, it's like like table limit home team. LSU's probably mentally out of gas after they got debacled. And now you got people trying to calculate Kelly's no. uh, buyout. It's, you know, our friends down there in BR. Patience isn't there's a that's a long list of things about the folks down there that we love. We've made that clear. Mm-hmm. Not the most patient folks. Monday will be so Monday will be fun. Why is that? Our two LSU guys will be in a great mood. I'm sure. Oh, that's true. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, that's it. I mean, he's not from there, man. Like th- there's there's really one rule, you mm-hmm. gotta win. Yeah, and he has. He's been a winner. I know you and I are both uh, advocates. Mm-hmm. I think Brian Kelly's been an excellent football coach. Uh, it's it it is an interesting marriage. It always was like, huh? Like we all knew that whether it was college or high school. Although in my case, I can't remember it that far back because I'm so old. But there's always that one couple that you go, oh, I didn't see those two together. That's interesting. <laughs> Sometimes it works out, and it's great. Yeah. And other times it's like, you know, the Billy Joel song, you know, Brenda and Eddie with the popular steadies, right? King of the Queen of the Prom. Uh, scenes from an Italian restaurant. Look at anyway, you. Um, I, I really have become Chris Berman. I'm referencing <laughs> Billy Joel songs from a thousand years ago. Just, <laughs> it's late. I'm... <laughs> You gotta we give, me the, the, give me the Eagles by the end. Give me the Eagles by the end. All right, All right. We're good. Yeah. <laughs> Standing on the corner of Winslow, Arizona. It's such a fine sight to see. It's a girl, my lord, in a flatbed Ford slowing down to take a look at me. Hey. We'll be right back. <laughs> um <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't know what happened. I was just talking about LSU, and the next thing you know, boomer. I'm doing Boomer singing lyrics. The South Carolina-Missouri game, had it been, if the Indiana-Ohio State game next week follows the same script as South Carolina-Missouri, they'll say it's the greatest game ever played. Mm. Uh, give South Carolina a ton of credit. There were four touchdowns scored in a row in South CAC that traded the lead back and forth and forth and back. It's South Carolina scores... No, Missouri scores and South Carolina scores and Missouri scores. And then with 16 seconds left, I believe it was. Yeah. What I a believe call. that's when Sanders ran it in. Ballsy, man. Mm. Ballsy. And um, South Carolina winning is one of those deals that now it makes some other, make, like it makes that Bama win more impressive because now they're a part of the rankings and all the rest of that stuff. But I give Coach Drink's team a ton of credit. That's where I wanted to go. Signed up for 60 and battled their tails off and their quarterback's been hurt and it's like true game time decision and he played the whole game i mean 
I know, I know I they, mean, they hit a they hit that the the fourth down conversion of Burden, who's going to be a monster in the pro game. That gave Missouri the lead, but then South Carolina, man, they they played in that fan base is nuts. I mean, they they're awesome. There's so many that are awesome. But th- good. Think of what they've dealt with this year. I, the LSU game at home that could have broken a lesser group. The Alabama game could have broken a lesser group. And and now here they are. They're on the back end of this this couple of incredible wins, including this one. But seriously, like if that game was a game featuring high ranked, high ranked, it would have been talked about as an amazing game. It was an amazing game. Mm-hmm. I guess my point is, I just want to acknowledge that it happened because it was fantastic. Um, Boise, I got to. God, that was disgusting. I want to shout out a coach, Steve. May I? Please. Kenny Dillingham. What's up? How about Arizona State? Their preseason over-under was like four and a mm-hmm. half. They went into the Little Apple, and they were up 21 nothing. I believe it was. Now, they had, it was hang on to your butts. Yeah. But what's their record now? Nine and, and two, aren't they're they? They're nine and two, I think. Not- Kenny D, much respect. Is he still the youngest coach? Yeah. Like in the power group? Mm-hmm. Well, I, I didn't. What was the Shaq line? I apologize. I wasn't familiar with your game. I just, I didn't think this is what they'd be. They're it was early two. in the year. Eight I remember they. Sorry. I'm, okay, that's what I thought. I remember they played like a Texas State early on in the year. Went and, there, I believe. Yeah. Correct, they did. Yeah. And. It's Kenny, right? And it's like Kenny G-G. and Dillingham, yep. and it's like, and it's like, all right, this is a cool young coaching matchup. And I'm thinking, oh, that that, that was a back and forth game. I must say, Texas State was favored. I remember thinking, well, this is telling you all you need to know. No, and when they got that one, I thought, oh, there's a there's a nice little story, right? <laughs> That's like exactly what I was just had him on the nice head. Little story. Oh, how about it? Yeah, you guys over there doing it. Look at you. Yeah, you can ride a bike. <laughs> Now here they are playing a big bowl game. No doubt. Just one of can't that Kansas State team at, at 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 one point in the year we were looking at them going, ooh, that Big 12 might go through them. As it turns out, Colorado waiting to get to them. Mm-hmm. Utah's decimated by injury and came off a holy war loss that I mean, if they got beat today by a thousand, I would have said, Well, yeah. As it is. It wasn't that bad, but this Colorado team, how the you, what futures you you got the wrong future for the Heisman, I think, because Hunter is gonna any play Hunter has is gonna be like, look at this. And he made a sick catch, he got an interception, but it's off a tip, and then he got a touchdown that's a fun one, but it's like kind of garbage time late, and all of it just adds on to this incredibly awesome player that we love. But now any kind of highlight play is and he fired up the Desmond which Desmond did it against Ohio State, which is a little different deal, but I get it. Everybody, I mean, do your Heisman. Genty did it too. I'm not picking on him. Uh, I just think of all the impressive things Colorado's done today was, uh, of course, you're going to win and win easy because Utah's toast and you're ascending, but it's just another log on that Colorado fire, Steve. No doubt. Uh, I'm so glad you brought him up. Um Went over to our guy at a head dog's house to watch the noon games. And, uh, you know, Coach Donnan? Oh, yeah. Block the email. The best. Love him. And, what a great man. Yep. Called me right after the game. How about them dogs? He's still doing his live stream for Georgia games. Uh, I, can't, I cannot say enough about that man. I'll, I'll touch on it at the at the end before we go. But we're sitting there okay. watching. Uh, we got Colorado on, you know, it was. He's got he, coach got the setup, man. Split screen, Colorado in uh, Texas, Arkansas on the TVs, uh, Pitt and Clemson on the lower one. And I just said, coach, man, I, I, I know what you thought of getting recruiting. Like he was in it, man. Go back and look at, at the guys he had. He had two, he had two gold jackets tonight get honored at the Georgia game. 
that he coached at Georgia and Richard Seymour and Champ Bailey. And that's that that's a couple of the Georgia legends. Anyway, but we're just watching. I'm like, these skill guys, man, that Colorado, now that they could firm it up up front and give Shador time. And then that catch, like we rewound it six times. The catch by Hunter down by the goal line. Scott, his nuts, his his feet are are six, seven feet off the ground, and he's still going up to catch the ball. Like it's 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 yeah. it's, it's insanity what this kid is athletically, and then he comes to Penn State for game day. You get a couple minutes to talk with him. An incredible kid. What'd you do on your bye week? Oh, I went fishing. Oh, yeah. I went fishing. I, I just want to go fishing. Like, like it. It's just it's that good. And then Shador, I, I'm in the tank for Shador. I've talked about it for for months. I feel like yep. to see what he went through last year, and. I'll admit, like, I questioned Dion, like, why are you putting your son in this circumstance where, I mean, there was a Washington State game. I think it was a Friday night. They're getting beat to beat to hell, and he's still out there. Yeah, they did. Getting sacked, getting hit. And for that kid to keep getting up, uh, starts the game today with a pick. Uh, I, I'm astounded by him because w- when he's been beaten and tattered and hit, he gets up, and only Dion's son could get up and always look so pretty. And he is so darn good. I, I, I mean, the resilience that he has and the way, you know, you, you see the interview after the game with with uh, Shador and Travis, like, they're the best team in that conference. It's, it, it's not close, in my opinion. And then to see that scene, to be there for that scene last year, and the idea uh-huh. that they might get a home game, like that's that's some that that I I, I don't I, like there. We spent so much time talking about them when they weren't this good, and now that they're that good, we don't talk about them. And I want to talk about like the X's and O's. Pat Shermer, the guy calling the plays. I I played for him. I love Pat Shermer. And he's an old school guy. Saban was talking stories about he was at Michigan State with him. Like this is eight in the eighties. He played like Tony Mandrich, you know, head coach of the Giants. Didn't work out. Great offensive coordinator in the NFL. And he just finds himself in Boulder, and he's calling plays for these two young superstars. It's the 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 full circle element of it, and and the idea of of Dion and and these guys showing out and having this this rise is absolutely awesome and i i wanted i I wanted to make it a point because i haven't been able to watch them live today and i did that today and it was they exceeded expectations and uh it's it's awesome really good i think they play at arrowhead against kansas next week awesome game careful it's our jayhawks Look, what do you think? They, seven Daniels in that seven? Kansas. I'm going to get to them in a seven? minute. I'm going to get to them in Ten? a minute. I'm taking them, whatever they are. <laughs> You're giving out Cal. I'm giving out Kansas. I go. gave them over Iowa state there on the go. field, gave them against BYU on the field. Yep. I'm going to ride Kansas. It's not a disrespect. I look, I've been wrong on Colorado all year. I'm just, this is a pro Kansas play, but I want to dovetail the the Colorado points you just made. The thing about Shadur <clears throat> I got to go back. I'm, I really, really, really don't like the idea that anyone who's critical is a hater. I think that's a weak-minded position, and I don't think Deion Sanders is a weak-minded man. He's not. I think saying anyone that's critical is a hater is wrong. There are definitely haters, people that line up to root against that man and his kids because they're haters, and haters are losers, mm-hmm. okay? Losers. I'm not a loser. I was critical of stuff that happened last year. I was critical of going after kids on social media. I thought that was weak. That I'm, I was critical of that. When they lost to Nebraska this year, I was like, eh, that's, they're not, nope, this is not it. And I didn't want to be part of this circus of Colorado again because you said it, Steve. We talked so much about them last year, and they weren't any good. Mm-hmm. They were early. But then we look back, we're like, oh, actually, no, they, they almost lost to Colorado State, yada, yada. And then it was 
we're here. And then Oregon beat the brakes off him, and that sent him in a tailspin. And we still talked about him last year because they were raiding. Well, this year, all the things that people said or thought they might be last year is, is and are happening. And Shadur Sanders is going to be a top whatever draft pick. And you cannot like him because he's Dion's kid and he's richer than you are and that pisses you off. But that kid got obliterated last year. Mm -hmm. And there's a saying, if you get knocked down, what do you do? Get back up. And that young man kept doing it. And to your point, he kept on being him. Mm -hmm. And I admire that. I admire that. Because that comes from a place of knowing who you are, knowing what your last name is, and knowing what you're supposed to represent. And that guy has balled out. Hunter is nuts. All these Heisman moments, fine. You got something for your video, but you want to know what the Heisman moments are? Playing 100 and something snaps a game and being the best corner on the field and being one of the best pass catcher playmakers on the field. Those are Heisman moments. So all credit to Dion, to Shadur, to Travis, and to the Buffs, Sko Buffs. That, that you're, you said it really well. We talked a lot about them last year. They weren't any good. Mm-hmm. We should be talking about them more this year because they are. And they. I think we both believe they're better than BYU. And BYU got beat tonight. It finally happened. Mm-hmm. They were playing with fire, and tonight they got burned. And the play, I don't know if you saw it, it's nuts. Kansas is right in that field goal. Do we go for it? Do we not go for it spot? And they snap it to Daniels, and he quick kicks it, and it oh, yeah. bounces off a BYU um, return guy. And then a BYU guy can't get it, and Kansas pounces on it at the two. They walk it in the next play. They take the lead, and then they stiffen inside their own 10-yard line late and turn BYU away, and now Kansas beats them. And so I think it's still – BYU didn't have any losses, so I believe it's still trending BYU-Colorado. Yeah. For the Big 12 championship game? Yep. But Colorado does have to go to Kansas. And so after saying all these things that I mean about Colorado, I'd also say to them, in offering all this praise, also a word of caution, this Kansas team is is playing like the team that started the year ranked. All those losses they had are in like one-score games, every single one of them. Um, just a big spot. But you watched them more carefully than I did today. Um and you were you were impressed by what you saw out of the buffs. Yeah, I've, and and this goes back, you know, I, I they're going like t- to think about the Baylor game and how close that was to, I believe that would have been their third loss, and th- none of this is possible. But to go back, a no, couple- and Baylor, we watched that. We watched that game, and I, that night Baylor was better for most of yeah. it. Their kicker misses a kick, which leaves the door open mm-hmm. for a for a, a, a hail mary to tie them, and then they win an OT. I mean, but listen, what do good that become great teams do? They figure out how to win close games. Oregon wasn't great tonight. Figured out how to win a close game. Figure it out. Figure it out, and they but, have along the way, and that and they've gotten better along the way. Clearly, but that's. Going back to what I try and do is people keep bringing up the Nebraska game. The game was over at halftime. And what I made a point of doing was I watched the second half before I watched the first half. I was at, I forgot what game I was at Mm. that night. And I wanted to watch the second half and they're still in it. Defense battle. I don't, I don't think Nebraska scored an offensive touchdown in the second half. And that's, where you make strides, man. Like you're you're up against it. That place is a zoo. It's an old school rivalry. Those kids have no idea what Nebraska, Colorado used to be. But they're in a yeah. raucous. They don't know who Dean Steinkeeler no. is. No. Sle- Corey Schlesinger, no clue. But they're in a raucous environment and they, they battled. And then you take steps from there and you move on. Stay in the fight, and, right? Exactly. And you go to UCF and you rip that team's soul out. And if you see what that team has been since Colorado went there. Uh, so I, I, I just, I can't say enough about Shador. Uh, I, I have just wanted to, I watch him every single week, go back and watch it, knowing what I watched last week. And 
I know Travis Hunter is the best player in the sport, but Shador is the guy that makes that thing go. And uh, he's incredible. He's must-watch TV, and I, I absolutely watch, love watching him. It's 2.15 East Coast time. Let's go. Keep going. I know. I'm, the floor is yours. I mean, I've been, I've been reading off my card. Who else you got? Oh. Things today that happened that mattered. Coach Donnan, Athens. There's some, Whatever you got. There's some uh, energy here. Like I said, I mentioned at the beginning, 37 days, and I know these people that don't follow college football that listen to the pod just to hear our thoughts, but, like, that thing means a lot to people down here. They were fucking starving for a home game, and they got to see their team go to Tech. Like, they haven't seen their team, I believe, since they went to Texas and won. You know, there's like a bye week in there. There's a there's a game. There's a cocktail party. There's the Ole Miss game. Like that, it, it, this place is is resonated on the football team, and for a lot of your life and a lot of my life before the last five years, or no, I shouldn't say five, till Kirby took the job. Um, oh my God, I gotta find that stat by the way because it came true tonight. Um, anyway, aggression. They were. They were starving tonight, and this place was amped up Thursday night. Uh, God, I wish you ate sushi. Uh, Chuck's Fish here. There's one here. There's one in Tuscaloosa. There's one in Mobile. It's incredible. Cook it. Secret menu. Can I get cooked seafood? Secret menu. Can I, get, can, I can, can they cook the fish? They, Is it only How sushi? about this? They made us a Wagyu roll. It was the steak melted in your mouth. It was unbelievable. Unbelievable. Um, what I was, what was really I cool. Like a king. Um, oh God. It's like a month straight. I'm going to get emotional on this podcast. Uh, our guy, David Pollock is here and, uh, he's coaching his son in, um, in high school. And we all went to the game Friday night. And, uh, Knowing David that you do, and knowing how passionate he is, um, it was like I always called I always called his son Nicholas Lil Man because he was Lil Man. He was he was you know whatever eight nine years old, kids six three two fifteen now playing tight end high school football, and to be there Friday night, see David on the sidelines with the headset him bring us in um was was nuts man uh, <laughs> who all who who all went who all went oh the the crew uh reese myself uh jess jen jimmy gallero uh david's dad was there to to greet us and um it was it was really cool they got a setup man i'll tell you I got to say it right because I, I said it wrong before and Coach Donnan told me the right way to say it. North Oconee, not Oconee. North Oconee. Yeah, it's, Oco it's Oconee. Oconee, yeah. Uh, got a squad. Got a squad. Receiver going to Georgia, five-star, junior, David's kids. So they won. Oh, 49 nothing. Like, Scott, you know me where I'm from, Okay. He walks us down. To Shout the, out Valley. We, he walks us down to the field. They got the inflated tunnel with the inflated helmet that the team runs out of. Dry ice, light show, the whole thing. And I'm looking around. I'm like, this is a high school game. Like, this is college stuff. And uh, it was it was just awesome. Uh, knowing David's passion, how motivated he is. He's Coach John always said it, he's the most driven guy ever. Um, but just to see that, uh, was awesome. And it's, it's whatever. I think we drove nine miles, uh, there and to see that in the passion, it, um, you know, their school colors are red and black, of course. Uh, but it was, it was really, really cool, man. Um, and, uh, well, here's what I'd say. Here's what I, here's what people should get. And you're hearing it from Steve. Um, look, man. It's no secret how the business goes. Our place, a lot of places in, in the business, um, you you lose people because business. Yeah, 
And the thing that's that I think has been evident, and David has shown it with the the crew he was a part of, and the crew shows it to David is that there's a there's a love there and there's a bond there it doesn't go away no you know I mean I know you went on with McShay um and he's doing his thing with the ringer I think that that that's the cool thing that I value so much about this gig um are the those people and you know I think <clears throat> there's three f's in, in in Pollock's life starts with faith then it's family then it's football those three hmm. And it's obvious with him, and it's he he he's very uh, on his sleeve with all of those things that that matter to him. And uh, I did a thing about um, talking about my boy playing flag football uh, on a podcast, and I talked about him winning a pin and talking about how I told him you should be proud, and he said I am, and and I got the greatest message from David, and now I'm emotional because I think about. You know, that's this is the that's the shit that matters, man. Like, look, we love we love ball and we love what we get to do and all this. But, you know, he just reached out to me to talk about about being a father and about mm -hmm. how cool he thought that story that I shared was. Um, and so that's just little man's a big man now, oh. and that's uh, <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, man, that's fantastic. And what's even better? That, that's really beautiful. And uh, what's that? We're going to see Chase Herb Street Friday night in the Ohio State playoffs. That's you. well, that'll be good. Well, for God's sake, keep Petey away from. I I sent hey, I sent whoa, Herbie whoa, whoa, a text. Whoa. I'm like, Petey's hey, my dog. No, no one, no one's ever, no, no one will ever love. Uh, <laughs> America will never love a dog the way they love Ben. <laughs> Pete, hold my beer. Here he's running around chasing Ugga. Hey Ugga, want to play Ugga? It's like, I mean. Uh, here comes a puppy dog. Uh, anyway, but Herbie, speaking of f faith, football, family. Uh, so you guys get to go. Wow, you're back in Columbus. Yeah. And you get to see that. You get to see his Herbie's guy in the doing state playoffs. The Browns, Browns game Thursday night. Do our Friday, and we go down. I think he said the game's going to be at Mason. It's it's Saint X against Moeller, man. Like this is this is big. Ooh, that's real. Big, that's yeah. It's big boy. Um, all we're talking, we're talking, it's, we're talking minor leagues football compared to what that is in that yeah, part of the world. That's exactly that's heavyweight, heavyweight. Yeah, right um, on. I do just want to talk about the show today. Like, uh, <laughs> Pat put up eight hundred thousand dollars today, and he's he's donating eight. Understand, understand what we're eight hundred. Understand what we're talking about here. That's his money. Yes. So it's the most genius thing ever. His money. Yes. But so a girl, Brooke, I, I, I wanted to make sure her name is right. Brooke. So for the people that want to know about the field goal contest, here's how it works. The people that get in the pit, they get in line on Friday and people get in line at 6 p.m. People get in line at midnight. People get in line at 2 a.m. People get in line at 3 a.m. And I believe on the east coast we open them at 4 a.m this girl brooke got in line i believe at 2 a.m and when you get into the pit it's a certain amount until we fill that first section we want all students there obviously you see the helmets and all that and you get a raffle ticket when you get in there and i think after the second segment of the show we pull the raffle ticket and that's who gets to kick the field goal. And Brooke won the field goal. And she had done some homework, I believe, and asked if anybody could do the kick because she came to herself and said, I can't do it. I don't know if she said that out loud, but she gave it uh, to our guy. And he gets out there and the story after he, I mean, he says he played high school soccer does the whole thing and I'm standing underneath the goalpost and we said all right this week one kick one kick let's get it and when Brooke <laughs> says she made the decision Pat's like all right we're gonna double it was 150 you're both gonna get 200 and then on top of that I'm gonna do 400 for the hurricane relief 800,000 
This kid gets on there. I'm yelling at Pat, make sure his shoes are tied. And this kid booted a ball. I'm not even exaggerating. Good from 45. And Herbie starts running towards me. And I'm I'm underneath. I'm like, I don't even have to look at this thing. I mean, it was right, right through the middle. And it it was incredible, man. Uh I I the girl the look on the girl's face when I went to give her a hug. And I'm like, you just won two hundred thousand dollars. She didn't say a word. She's just looking at like dead stare, like. And then um, a bunch of people were able to FaceTime uh, the kicker's friends from behind while he did it. And it's, I mean, you've seen all the videos. Pat actually has a picture with him from when he was a child, and Pat was a punter with the Colts kid was a Colts fan like it the the full circle thing of this today was just incredible like during the the next three commercial breaks it was like we 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 just kept circling everything and and couldn't believe it was real it was a all-time moment um and and everybody was in on it but uh Pat and 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 the deal that he does it, it was unbelievable unbelievable and there's been a lot going on in the show with the weeks and you mentioned ben uh and all that but uh it it just it just keeps up in the ante and uh it was it was nuts to be a part of absolutely incredible blown away been a hell been a hell of a year and and certainly the thing about that show that has made it what it's been is is these those moments right that the uh, the the connective tissue of sports and what Pat's doing with his own dough to help people out mm. uh, is remarkable. And uh, I mean, look, the dude's earned a ton of money and good for him, but to share it, like he didn't have to do that. Think about that, man. He, it's amazing. He walked back on Absolutely the desk. Absolutely amazing. He walked back on the desk and Reese says, eight, 800. <laughs> He's like, I know you got deep pockets, <laughs> but it was awesome. Uh, I mean, unreal. Hey, what's I, but I guess the beauty of the beauty of the having it is to share it if you uh, if you're so moved to do so and that to have it be in moments like that that are like again they become this all anyone was talking about this morning was that yeah um, but again I I missed it because we uh, the Texans were on the field for approximately seven hours uh, and then the Seahawks played. I mean, the game started at 2.30. It was almost fucking dark by the time we are done. <laughs> I swear to God. Like, what, what we, each team, high-level stuff, though. I was going to say. High-level stuff. Yeah, Vikings, yeah, 30-point rule in that league. Well, each team gets four possessions per half, and it's, and it's uh, high-level. Lots of scoring, not a lot of stopping, but it's not chunk plays. It's you're matriculating a little more scheme. But in the end, Seahawks got a stop. Amazing. Big time dub. Uh big time dub for the for the Seahawks. So salute. Coach Rob and the gang. Uh they're out there battling. Texans took a d- double header. They're a wagon. Oh. Uh so that's Sounds like that's we got what we a couple got there, wagons right? so in I'm, that league. Yeah. Say nothing. Did you have old Dominion? Say less. Say... I did. Push. Push. Was it bad? Yeah, really. Oh uh, well, not if you had old Dominion. They were down. They were down. They were up twenty four twenty one. Old uh, James Madison took a twenty eight twenty four lead. Then they score late to go up thirty five twenty four, and then the Monarchs sign up for sixty. Scored a tutter, got the two, oh. ended up losing by three. So I'm complaining oh. about oh. what happened with San Jose State because it was just gruesome. <laughs> but I did get a push out of Old Dominion. So it's a little bit like golf. If you, any of the people that play golf out there, you know, you hole out from a bunker, you skull one and it hits the flag and it drops. You don't remember that later. But if you three putt, you'll see, I should have shot an 84. Hey, Bozo, you hold out four times. Oh. 
Speaking of holding played, out, you played like played like crap, but you know, all you think about is the three putt. Speaking of holding out, yeah. Our favorite Georgia golfers. Ah, uh, <laughs> think they were a little cashmere in the building. No one showed up. Not one. What? So was there an event? Oh, they all watched the game together out in their island where they live. A little nervous. Well, they do. I I did I did get they one didn't... I get I did get one text from one former Georgia golfer that said, "Night games take two days away from the from the prep." So uh, there's a well. So what? So what I'm hearing? Another what I hear is that up. these are so the professionals understand. We had a group of elderly gentlemen that went down to Oxford last week, and we're still feeling the effects of it midweek. Mm. And so recognizing that they want to focus earnestly on the craft, they couldn't couldn't come down and and hunker down for the evening and festivities and then the required recovery. I get that. Yeah, it was, uh, but I, Coach Mook at uh, Georgia Golf, great man. Thank you for the Rex. Cashmere Legend. came through. So is Coach Don, and he's good. Coach D's good. Coach D's the man. Walk into dinner, it's like the mayor, man. Unreal. You did a great job That's, at the Maryland. Talk about David hey. Pollock. I, I, what? Maryland game. You did a great job. I saw the Jumbotron video. Uh, we started last week talking about yeah. uh, John Brown, our friend. And uh, you know what? I, I do want to say a shout to Maryland for that. That uh, I mean, John owned a bar, right? So you could say, like, you're going to, you're going to, before the anthem, before the Marquette game, which mm. was awesome. Uh, congrats to Shaka. By the way, Cam, K1, Marquette. If there are five better players than that dude in America, I want to see him <laughs> because that guy is a problem. <laughs> Holy smokes. But before Maryland plays Marquette, um, we had a really cool deal where, I started the pod, and we'll close it this week. We mentioned John Brown, who, yeah. who runs a place called R.J. Bentley's, which is the spot. And when Maryland wins a game on the show, I'd say, let's go to Bentley's. Um, and before they played the anthem, they had this uh, really lovely tribute video that we did uh, that I voiced over. But then standing at midcourt is myself and Coach Williams. And... You know, I was able to to share that, you know, John was a whole lot more than a guy that owned a bar. This is a brilliant businessman. He was a successful businessman. He supported the university, he loved athletics. He was friends to a lot of people. And I said, we're going to miss him because we will. But I, as I said to coach, you know, there's a built-in way that we can remember him with a smile. And then Coach Williams had, had one line and he knocked it out of the park. He raised the cup and said, let's go to Bentley's. And the place goes nuts. And uh, then there was a really fun, high-level back-and-forth game. And... Uh, Terps had a chance there late, couldn't uh, couldn't make a couple free throws, and uh, Marquette ended up getting a dub. Anyway, uh, that was fun, but I appreciate Maryland doing that because, again, you could say, like, you're going to mention a, a guy that, like, there's a whole lot more than a guy that owned a bar. And I think the, I think the beauty of, of talking to Steve and these spaces late on Saturday night after you've been in the, me- in the middle of these, of these college towns is that every one of them, has their Bentleys. Mm. And if you're lucky, if you're lucky, there's somebody like John Brown who's been a fixture that cares about not just making money, but about the town and about being a place that matters. And that's that's what Bentleys is to us, is a place that matters. And that's Athens has places that matter. Sanford Stadium is a place that matters. <laughs> Which is you've done a great job, Oof. did a, a great job explaining that um, tonight. But I think that's why one of the many reasons why we love this sport is that the people that make the ta- places and the towns that make this sport, you know, something altogether different. So 
to all those people, to all the John Browns, wherever they're at. Uh, you guys are doing, you guys are doing the good stuff. The, the you're doing the Lord's work. Uh, and I mean that. Mm -hmm. So it's late. You've been at it all day. Um, I'll see you in Dallas, right? No, I'm going to, I'm going to, we're going, I'm going to take a ride with you. Are you coming home? Yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to attempt to come home tomorrow. Or today, whatever it is. Oh, that's right. Your East Coast, your East Coast, whatever. <laughs> I'm going to do it. I literally don't know what day it is. So, all right. Enjoy the day with the girls. And uh, we'll see you Monday a.m. for a little trip to Dallas. Cowboys. How about the Cowboys? <laughs> and the Texans. And I'll see you for Sports Center Sunday night. Thanks for hanging out with us. It's uh, SV Pod. Safe travels, my man.